next project from, from Tyler and Chase. Take it away. Hello, everyone. Thank you for allowing us to be here and to present to you. My name is Chase Kaverzaki. My name is Tyler. We'll get started. So the problem is that the need imported 100% of their electricity in 2017, and it cost them over 183 million US dollars. Access to electricity is limited. Only 41.4% of Beninese residents have access to reliable electricity. In rural areas, only 9% of people have access to electricity. Benin needs a reliable energy source in order to be able to increase their development and allow their citizens to focus their time on other tasks. We believe that the solution for the problem is renewable energy. The renewable energy that we're looking at is hydroelectricity. <coughs> Our micro hydro power stations that we did research on involve different components. Part of that component is starting with diversion or intake. We would not dam the whole entire river or stream or spring that we're taking the water from, but we'd only do a certain portion of it, enough to start the penstock, where, or the pipeline for the water to run, but we would, during construction phase, not have the water running down that, we would have it being built. And then with the turbine, based on the amount of head and flow of the river and the size or of stream, we will gauge what type of turbine system we are going to use for that certain location. From there, an option if the, system, if the river or stream is too far away from where we want the electricity or the power to go to, there is the option for rechargeable batteries or rechargeable energy station. So that way that is by the river and then you can use that to bring to where you want the power to be and then swap back and forth with that. And you can have a dump load system to absorb the surplus energy so that way energy is not being wasted but being stored and built up. If the river or stream is not able to be able to have enough head or flow for that, we can use something called a hydram. It's used a lot in agriculture and irrigation, but what it does is it boosts the pressure from the water. So we would have that boost before it hits the turbine in order to increase the power of the production so that way it is able to sustain our micro hydro electric station. Um, we're still currently doing our research and there is a company in Kenya called Appropriate Technologies that is currently using this system along with other countries in Eastern and Central Africa that are using this. And even possibly here, um, we just learned about how there is possible ongoing projects here on when we came here on Monday. So we kind of built a five-step plan that outlines the entire process of how we would install one of these micro hydro stations. So step one would be to identify potential locations and location scout based on where electricity is needed and also access to a river. And we do realize that there, we just learned that there is eight possible micro locations already kind of maybe located here in Benin. So we start with those first. Then we would hold a village meeting to talk about the project and ensure that Everyone involved knew what was going on. From there, we would begin construction. As Tyler mentioned, we would dam only part of the river. Uh, sometimes when you build a hydroelectricity station, you have to dam the whole river, which can disturb wildlife or the flow of water for people downstream that rely on the water. So we hope to dam only part of it where we need to divert the water for our pin stock. Then we would finalize the construction and finally, hand over the hydro station to the residents in the village. And we would involve the residents of the village in the construction process so that they can do ongoing maintenance and make sure that the station 
continually runs even when we're not there with them. Just to stress the importance of that, so that way once we are done with the projects, the locals are able to maintain their projects and gain the knowledge on it because this is all about having the local community involved. This is a very fuzzy Gantt chart of our process, but we imagine the whole process to install one from start to finish to take about two years, but we know that this will adapt over time as we gain more experience. So the first three months will be spent consulting with engineering professionals and the local community in order to design a system that works. Then the next two months would be ordering the parts necessary from our suppliers. Two more months would be involved in getting those parts delivered to our site. After all the parts are delivered, we start construction, which is listed here as 16 months. And then for six months, we would do ongoing training and uh, other necessary finalizations before handing over the project. And if this were a little bit clearer, you'd be able to see that some of those steps overlap. So if in some months, we're ordering parts, but also receiving them. So it's not a full four months for that process. That first initial phase is important. Once we have the locations picked out, and once we've consulted, that's when we secure the funding within the first three months. In order to go to funding sources, we need to have those strategic locations picked out so that way we have material to be able to present. So, yeah. And for our funding, um, we looked at some potential funders partnering with the Power Africa Initiative, um, getting funding from the Beninese government, philanthropists and donors within the U.S., as long with, along with other projects that might be ongoing, we may be able to partner, and international aid organizations. Based on the size of the project and how much money is needed for that location, if it's a larger scale micro hydro station compared to a smaller one, we reach out to certain different organizations. Um, at this time, we'd be happy to take any questions that you might have and be able to answer them.